All right. You will start playing the video in two, one. Okay, let's see what we've got here. We've got Rahim Get Karuna and Yorina. Ira. Yeah, Ryan Jr. not keen on the mirror match. Can't say I fault that. Banning Gimika is pretty safe in general. So I wonder how Gimika and Ryra would work together. I guess you just play a bunch of Gimika cards and then kill your opponent off with uh, Thundercall. Pretty yu gi -He heavy deck from Generic and kind of mixed from Ryan Jr. A lot of defensive tools for generic. Spooky footing or Manami. I don't know about taking Swaying Flame over Suki Kage Crush. Early focus. Um, yeah, theoretically he should outrange his opponent, so I think that's par for the course. This is how you get punished, though. That's a good way to find out if your opponent's running absolute zero, I suppose. Focus one, and then, yeah, you're going to freeze me now, right? And it's not the worst time to be frozen. It does set your economy back, though. Basically, it means you end up losing out on some flare over your opponent as they have more time to just focus and advance. None of these cards are really going to do much right now, so yeah, it makes sense to just focus them off. Uh, moving forward, we build your vigor. Only really makes sense if you're planning to play out the rest of your hand anyway. Okay, unlocks himself with frostbite. Yep, collects the. Uh, Missed charge on absolute zero. Uh, 
Uh, Cyclone Blade's a safe discard. Yeah, I agree with that. See, so didn't really feel necessary though. Like, could have just moved forward to. Uh, kept a vigor for next turn with two cards. There probably isn't a punish for it here. Definitely isn't. Okay, generic moves to range 6, filling aura. Possibly trying to set up a swing next turn. Hasn't changed Umbrella's position at all yet. There you go, Ryan Jr. His Umbrella is closed. It's interesting that Ryan Jr. brought Wind and Thunder. I don't think he ever increases his wind gauge in this match, so that's a little questionable as a take. Usually if you bring Wind and Thunder, you're going for a Storm Charged Claw build, or you're going for some kind of hybrid wind build. Usually wind with Storm Charged Claw. Alright. This is uh, some minor value, since there's only one token in Shadow. Okay, Ryan Jr. doing strange plays here. Okay. Obviously do the sensible play and just move backwards one. So he could theoretically have maintained the same distance and just increased gauge. Okay, generic's in a good spot to throw out the 3-1 here. Nothing wrong with that. You either force your opponent to start closing with you, or hit their life. Either way, it's pretty good. Okay, that's not in range. <laughs> what do I do now? That's right. And Ryan Jr. should take this to life. Yep. Okay.
again, playing down to zero vigor. I don't think that was necessary, but it works out if he's planning on playing his throughout a card next turn. So makes sense in that sense. Okay. Generic tries to use the Yuki dodge, but fortunately there's no shadow for him to put into distance here, so it just has no effect. Some card tracking going on. Getting charged off of Postum is a uh, pretty cool, pretty cool idea. It'll probably be really easy to get a lot of uh, charge out of that card, depending on how generic plays around it. Okay, this seems way too early. Way, way, way too early. Get absolutely no value out of it right now. Can't move backwards from it. I mean, I guess maybe he doesn't want to. You're not getting any freeze on your opponent. It's really, like... Plus, you can play it as a reaction for four, and that will beat out Tsukikage Crush. It'll beat out Swaying Flame. There's a lot of safety that that card gives you, and playing it right here just to gain a little bit of movement and some charge is uh, honestly pretty grief. Alright, so we get a 1-1. One, one. Derek chooses to take this to life, doesn't want to resurge the Apostum. I can respect it. Two two. You play the reaction to this. The reaction that Ryan Jr. knows you have. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, the forest response there, where he has to move two tokens from Shadow or two tokens to Shadow. Uh, he actually... So Ryan Jr. played the reaction there to try and dodge it, but if he'd gone forward twice from there, it still would have hit. So... It's questionable to do what he did, but then again, this lets him go back out to range 5 instead of uh, being stuck at range 2, which is where he would have been if he hadn't made that choice. I don't know that I like that, because opening the aura up gives you an opportunity to research a pasta. It lets you freeze him again next turn when you replay your Poro Charto. Uh, it just makes your life better in general, so choosing to go backwards and have your attack whiff after that is... Eh. I mean, okay, you're at range 5 now. And then you eat the swing from Yugi, but that... Uh, I mean, it's bad, but it's not as bad as hitting, eating the pierce or whatever. Arrange them without aura. It's not terrible, assuming your opponent has no way to unlock themselves. Generic kid bind or something like that. Or uh, awe, I think it is. No, that's not quite right. 
whatever the the urina enhancement he could use that to break his aura and move up and smack you about some one ones Yeah, that was almost a distance to player. Okay, chooses to research Postum. Not so great, but maybe it's fine. Range in your elves to reshuffle rather than taking the one aura damage to draw absolute zero by itself. draws a zero two and a two two. I believe that is uh, Frostbite in his hand. So theoretically, he can move forward two spaces, throw out the Cyclone Blade, and then make his opponent's life kind of miserable with uh, all the freeze tokens. Opting to move backwards instead. Not really efficient, but Considering generic is aura locked, it should be keep him out of trouble for a time at least. Okay, Poro Charto disenchanting, not getting, not being able to be replayed, and honestly, that, that card took four flare from Ryan Junior and contributed only two lightning gauge and. I think maybe it gave him a single movement backwards. Okay, generic opts not to swing at his opponent again. <clears throat> After a bit of thought, decides to do a hidden power. I guess he's probably moving closer. Also resurges the Apostle.
My engineer wants to take the one one to life. That's pretty. That's, that that feels really bad. That life could be taking a 2 1 or a 3 1. Or probably not. No, 2 2 is just as bad. Like, what other type of attack should I be thinking of here? Okay, playing the Apostum for under charge and nothing else. That's, uh, um. Maybe that's good enough. It's zero flare, and you're getting charge. Seems questionable. After, after some long consideration, Generic decides to draw his last card and take over damage. It's in the 3 1. Well, the 1 2, I guess, at this range is current umbrella state. Moves forward 2, resurges Postum again. Questionable. Then moves forward a third time. With the A reaction while we're locked. At this point, if you're Ryan Jr., you should be, like, scared to death of Tsukikake Crush. Like, it'll just kill you, if you, especially if you can connect with Brandish or something to life before that. <clears throat> Or heck, if uh, Generic has Umbrella closed, just Slash and Heat and Needles together would be enough, too. Okay, playing Absolute Zero out just for the recover action, it looks like. It's not great, but it gives charge. Then burns his own aura down at range 3 to play Frostbite. That just seems reckless. Very reckless. Okay, then spends his last figure doing nothing, which is very strange. If Generic had Tsukikage Crush, he wins the game that last turn, but he doesn't.
Okay, we're back to range 5. Game is surprisingly even right now. Ryan Jr. has enough flair to play his Thunder God Call. But right now it only does 5 life damage through Aura. Every point of aura is a point of life for generic right now. And you should be very aware of that because with this much thunder gauge and no wind gauge, it's pretty obvious what your opponent's doing. Custom resurges. Generic's only two charged away from being able to lethal here. No shadow for snow crossing. Custom for charge. Ice shards, research apostum if it hits uh, aura. Either way, for generic, he's dead next turn, or on Ryan Jr.'s next turn. If he. No, it doesn't matter what he does. The charge from that would have been enough anyway. So yeah, he may as well take it to aura. Theoretically, Frostbite can make the first lightning bolt a 2 2, followed by 9 1 1s, but. And there's just not enough sacred tokens that exist for uh, Ryan Jr. to be able to move back. All right, this should do it. We have four cards, one vigor, one of the cards is the necessary lethal component chain reel. We could even play out the brandish here and then move forward with the reaction and then chain reel. For some reason, he decides to open Ukefune. Um, I guess it makes shadow. I have no idea what the consideration there is. Makes no sense. Does nothing cost two flare. If anything, having shadow on the board works to your disadvantage, but that was going to happen with chain reel anyway. And then the swing flame. For five life damage. 
unless Generic didn't bring Thundercall, and this is a long-running bluff, and he has the Karuna reaction that cancels an attack if you have Floral Aura. Nope, he didn't. Okay. GG.